Good Sunday morning, everybody. Got a lot of work to do today. All this week, really, because Robert's coming on the 3rd or 4th. I'm not sure which one. Dave's doing. Dave's, covered. Dave's doing my job. Huh? Dave's doing my job. Yeah. My grading crew quit on me. Your grading crew's got food to process. Oh, uh, yeah. That is true. Yeah. So, I got to process all the food for leftover from yesterday's farmer's market, which was eh. Not much. It was raining all day. It was cold and windy. and Yeah. I mean, we had some people, but... We didn't do bad. We didn't do great, but we didn't do bad. Yeah. So, you got 14 more to go? Yep. One, to finish two, up, I mean. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, seven. Seven to finish up, and then I got eight that I'm going to complete four with the round tubes. So... 15, 15, to finish. Yeah, it's a little dank out here. The last two days with rain. All day long. Can't complain about rain though, because no. we need it. But no, but not. Not for two days straight. Yeah. It really hurts the work process. Yeah, because it's like sticks to the boots. Yeah. I'm not cleaning the carpet this morning. Till tomorrow. Maybe. Yeah. All right. Well, let's get this day started. This is what we have left from the farmer's market. We have some rutabagas, some kohlrabi, a few carrots, collard greens, and spring mix, which we're gonna have salad for dinner tonight. We'll probably have some of these collards for dinner tonight. I'm gonna freeze kohlrabi and rutabagas. I might make some coleslaw. So, Let's get started. Okay, so we had four bunches, either one pound bunches of collard greens left from the farmer's market. I'm probably gonna cook up two to eat for dinner tonight. And then I'm gonna cook up two to put in the freezer. So in order to freeze collards, we need to clean them. We need to cut off so they each have a, when they come out, when you cut them off the vine or off the plant, they have these hard pieces right here. So basically, I rip the leaves off. I mean, you could cut them. Sometimes I do. But what you really want is the, the green leafy part. And. I snatched these little guys. And once we get these all clean, we'll wash them. And then to freeze them, we're gonna blanch them. Blanching is a way of killing the bacteria on any kind of vegetable to freeze it. So we will blanch them for three minutes and then we'll dunk them in ice cold water to stop the cooking. And then we'll freeze them in our um, freezer bags that are airtight so I have one of those machines that sucks the air out uh, can't think of the name right now. anyway we'll do that and then we'll freeze those and we'll have some for later and the ones we cook we'll have for dinner tonight so we'll get that started okay Hold so on. before I start cleaning I've got a pot of hot water boiling getting ready to boil and that's what we'll add our kale or the her uh, collards to to blanch them and then right here I already have some ice water prepared ready to stop the cooking because we don't want to cook them all the way we just want to kill the bacteria so we're gonna do that first and 
I'll get to cleaning. Okay, that was painless. So this is two pounds of um, collards with the stems gone. So now I'm gonna give them a wash in the sink and rinse. And then we're waiting on this water here to boil. Once it boils, we'll put the collards in and we'll go from there. So let me give these a good wash and I'll be right back. So when I wash collars, I, get, I fill my bowl up first with water. Get a nice good water bath going on there. Now we've already rinsed these once, but you know, they just came out of the garden yesterday. So, or I'm sorry, Friday afternoon. So they're, you know, they've been in the garden. Even when you buy produce at a farmer's market, we all try to clean our produce, but you could always clean it more. And you never know, there could be little spots where, let's see, maybe that's where a little bug was eating that. I'm not a fan of those kind of things. They do cook down and there's no bugs on it. It's just where it's had a little bite here and there. It ain't gonna kill you. So we're gonna fill this with water. We're gonna let that sit for a minute. I'm probably gonna do this a couple of times just to make sure there's no more dirt, no more, no, no surprise critters or anything. So it is pretty clean. Got a little dirt, nothing major. And when you cook collards, this is probably what people would consider a little mess of collards because when you cook them, they cook down and they are not as fluffy as they are right now. So I'm gonna get a strainer and we'll strain these off and then I'll rinse it a couple more times. Okay, so this is my giant strainer. I'm going to hopefully can do this by myself. Our, our sink faucet broke when it's during this winter, so. Buttercup, shut up. I'm just gonna give this one last rinse. And make sure everything's good and clean. We're good. We'll let this drain for a minute. And wait for our water to boil. Just stick that under there to catch any water. Over here. 
Okay, so personally, I haven't added any seasoning to this pot because I don't, I'll do that when I cook it, when I'm actually gonna cook the meal with it. Um, you know, I just think it's better just to put the veggie in there, get it it's blanched, get it cooled off, and then freeze it, and then you can add seasonings when you bring it out of the freezer to cook it. So we're gonna wait for this to get to a rolling boil. And when it gets there, I'll show you what that looks like if you've never done this. So, be right back. Okay, so I just wanted to give you guys a little nutritional value about these collard greens. One cup of collard greens that are strained and no salt added. Okay, so this is no salt added. They have 5.15 grams of protein. They have 1.37 grams of fat, 10.73 grams of carbs, and they're 7.6 grams of fiber. They have calcium, iron, magnesium, phosphorus, potassium, sodium, zinc, vitamin C, vitamin A, vitamin E, a ton of vitamin K, which is really good in um, helping to fight off cancer. And then it has vitamin B, thiamine, and niacin. So it has a lot of nutritional value. You can eat um, collards raw, and you can make chips out of them uh, by baking them on a pan with some olive oil and sea salt. Uh, we can, you can just cook them like we cook them, just the southern way, uh, bacon and salt and all that good stuff. Um, or you can just. Uh, like I said, you can eat it raw. You could cut it up, put it in a salad, or put it on a sandwich. And then it's also good in stews that call for um, leafy greens because they hold up better than some of the other leafy greens. So our water is about to hit the boiling point. I'm gonna give it a couple more minutes because I like it to be rolling and I wanna show you what rolling um, bowl looks like. It's just starting to do that, but if you stare at it, it won't boil, so. I'll be right back. Okay, it's a little chilly here today, so we got this steam going on. And I don't know if you'll be able to see, but a rolling boil is where you can actually see the water rolling. Let me see if I can get some of this out of here. No, it's gonna be hard to see. I'm oh, sorry, and I fogged you up. Okay, well, rolling boil, you want it rolling. So now we're gonna add the collard greens, and I'm gonna get some tongs. Because we're only going to do this for three minutes. So I'm just going to add these in. And if you can, I'll show you, they, they instantly start shrinking. And now these are a little cool, so they're going to cool that water back down a little bit. We're just gonna kind of push the push the greens down in. All right. See how that fluffiness cooked way down already, and it just been in there for a second. And they're softer. We're gonna let that come back up to a rolling boil and then we're gonna time three minutes and then we'll put it in our ice bath. So just give it a minute here. Timer ready. Give it a little stir. Now what this is doing is it's killing any bacteria that's on it and it's called this is called blanching so it's going to kill all the bacteria and then we can freeze it and that, and anytime in the winter we want some collard greens we'll have fresh beautiful collard greens to eat for dinner yeah look how look how wimpy they get see that's why you need so many of them to make a, a batch for your family now, please keep in mind, I'm new to all this and I'm doing this my way. If you want to look up recipes to do this, you can, you're more than welcome to do that. Um, I'm not the good.
guru of all this, but I'm, I'm learning and I hope that you can learn with me. Getting ready to come back up to our boil. And when you cook collard greens, or when I've cooked collard greens, they take quite a while to cook and be like really tender and flavorful. Um, so this three minute thing is not gonna cook them enough. Right, we've come back up to our rolling boil. I'm setting the timer for three minutes. Oh, not 20 minutes. Three minutes. And I'll be right back. No. All right, there's our timer. And we're going to pull this off to heat. Go ahead and turn that off. Timer. Now we're going to just take and add this to the ice water. So what this does is it just stops the cooking immediately so they're not So before we go any further, I just want to show you what a collard green looks like in the fresh state. And this is the three minute boil. So it gets much darker green and it does kind of shrivel a little, but that's right. So we're going to put this in our handy dandy freezer, our freezer bags and we're going to that seal? Yep, it's a vacuum seal. So we're gonna use this thing. You should not be worried about native food. If it's sealed, it's a vacuum. Right. Nothing survives a vacuum. Right. So words of wisdom from dad. Right. Oh. So there it is. That big old two pound pack of collards turned into this little bitty mass of collards. But these will fluff back up a little bit when you go to cook them. So we're gonna put these in the free, I'm gonna label it first with the date and what it is, and then we'll put it in the freezer. And this will be good to go to cook for another meal. Awesome. Okay, so while I was gone for a minute, my dad cooked his breakfast for him and mom. And I went ahead and got this pot of collars going for dinner tonight. So I've added a, a dash of garlic salt, um, an onion, and some bacon bits. And I'm, I brought it up to a boil, and now I'm gonna let it just simmer for the afternoon, because this is gonna be part of our dinner. So, yum. So next up, we're going to do some kohlrabi. Now kohlrabi is basically a German turnip. Um, you can eat it raw. You can eat it, make it into a coleslaw. You can cook it like a turnip. Um, we like it all the ways. I use it in my relishes when I make 
can relish. Um, we cut it and we make a dill dip with mayonnaise and fresh dill and let that sit over the, a few hours and then you just make chips or slices or cubes of this and it is yummy. Um, they have a taste, for me personally, I feel like they taste similar to a radish or that, that texture, but it doesn't have the heat. So my grandpa used to grow these in, in our, um, in his gardens and he was the one who taught us about them. Um, they do have a, when they're, when they're really young, you don't have to worry about it. You can eat it. it but as the outer layer grows and the, the, um, kohlrabi gets bigger, that skin gets harder. So you want to, you want to cut, slice, I'll show you. So as this, uh, excuse my little mess here, I probably need to wipe that off, but. As you, uh, as they get older, the skin gets harder and it's kind of yucky. So you, if you just take a, well, this is not my sharpest knife on the thing. And you cut the other side. And see how it has a, you can see that green layer all the way around? Well, if we peel that off, you can, these have been in the fridge for a day or two, so. You can just cut it off or use a potato peeler. I have a bunch of fresh ones of these that we have to process today. So, just clean all that green off. And inside, that's what it looks like. It's just a little. Now today, I'm gonna freeze some of these so we'll have them for later. So these are also part of the brassica family, the cabbage, kohlrabi, turnips, all that stuff. Um, I'm gonna cube these up a little bit. I might use these in a salad later or a relish or So for those of you who don't know, back in the day, they had these Oster Regency food processors. I got this one at a yard sale for 20 bucks. It works great. So I'm going to, um, I'm gonna cube the rest of these turnips with this German turnip. I'm gonna do those in cubes and we'll use them for cooking. But the rest of the kohlrabi that I have out in the cooler, I'm gonna peel it and then I'm gonna use this oyster to shred it so that I can use it in my relishes when the pickles come in, when the cucumbers come in. So, um, yeah, we're gonna use this bad boy today. Okay, guys. So I've chopped up the, th this was last week's leftover turnips and one kohlrabi. And I've decided I'm gonna just chop those up into diced pieces and freeze them like that all together. Cause they're all turnips anyway, so whatever. Um, so I've washed them, rinsed them. And now we're gonna um, boil, boil them for five minutes. And then I have an ice bath over here to cool them off and stop the cooking. And then we'll freeze those. So I'm gonna go ahead and dump those in. set the timer for five minutes. We'll come back up to a boil. And when that's done, we'll dump them in the ice bath. 
Okay, a little bit about the turnip. They are low in saturated fat and cholesterol. They have uh, vitamin B6, folate, calcium, potassium, and copper. They're a great dietary fiber. They have vitamin C and they're considered a superfood packed with nutrients. The greens are edible too. You cook them much as you do a collard green. You can also cook the turnips themselves in your turnip greens just to add different flavors. So turnips are a really great source of food and nutrition. All right, our timer's up and it's time to take these out of this water and put them in the ice bath. So we're gonna go ahead and turn off the timer. Find it, grab a spoon. We're just gonna, now you can can these as well. You have to pressure can them, but they will turn color. They'll turn a brownish color. So I, I opted to keep them in the freezer. Right, so this is this week's kohlrabi that we didn't sell. We had a lot of it this week. Um, we're probably gonna be pulling most of it soon because kohlrabi is a brassica, which means it's a cold weather plant. Um, it is, um, it, it'll start bolting, which are started bolting already because the weather's been so crazy here. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna peel these and then we're gonna use the, the Vita machine to shred it and then we'll blanch it and ice it and then freeze it so I can use these in our relishes this year because it tastes delicious in a relish. So I'll be back in a minute. Let me peel these. that I've got the water boiling again. I'm gonna add this peeled and shredded kohlrabi to the water for five minutes. And we will uh, put it in the ice bath, which I better go get that ready first. I'm actually gonna set this strainer in there because I'm gonna have to strain that a couple times anyway, but we're just gonna add this to it. Now this is gonna help me a ton when it comes to canning because I'll already have this part processed. We're gonna let this come back up to a boil. This might take a. I'm actually, I think I'm gonna make some coleslaw tonight with this extra. this tonight for dinner. I'm gonna let this come back up to a boil for five minutes. Get the timer ready. All right, it's been the five minutes. Now I've started taking this out and putting it into the ice water. And Let that cool. I'm just gonna take that out of it. Some things don't. I just strain it as a it cools. 
Okay, so I took a few minutes and cleaned up a little bit because it was getting a little crazy. Um, I've strained the diced turnips out of the ice water, but I'm gonna take them and I have two cooling racks with some paper towels. I'm just gonna let them sit on here for a minute and absorb some more of that water because obviously that's a problem with the seal meal is it doesn't like all that moisture. So I'm just gonna let them sit here for a little bit. I'll cover them up with another paper towel and let them cool. They're cool, well they're cool, but let them uh, dry out a little bit, just in here. So the, cool, the turnips are um, dried out a little bit and I'm gonna make two bags of those because I'm not sure how I'm gonna cook them later and I might just add them to turnip greens. I might mash. I don't know. I'm not sure yet. But if I do two, then I have then I have a nice amount for whatever I decide to do. Hopefully, this will go a little smoother. So I've got it warmed up, and I've sealed the bottom bag. I'm going to take it up that, that far. So that should be big enough for, for the batch of turnips. Then 